Is Eric Gustafson just Shane Gostasbear? I don't think he's just Shane Gostasbear because I think that he's okay. better defensively than Shane Gostasbear but, is. But you get the concern. <laughs> is well, is the Eric Gustafson signing a bad sign for Shane Gostasbear in terms of his <laughs> career in Philadelphia? Yes and yes and no. And I'll t- I mean, let's just wait. It's it's a, sure it's a concern because if you basically sign a guy who is very similar to you, right? What does that tell you about yourself with three years and four point five you're million exactly per on the contract? On the, you're not exactly high on the totem pole. That to me tells me I'm on the block and I'm very concerned. I, you right. know, obviously. Now, granted, I don't think there's a lot of takers because of the flat cap, so you're kind of safe. I think that here's the thing I think about Gossip Story this year, and this is why you're going to hear about this a lot. And we're going. I wanted to talk about this. This is one of the things I wanted to talk about when it came to the signing was. Gus, because it's gonna be Gus and Ghost. Do they go okay. together, or do they, or does Ghost have to go now? Right. And I know a lot of people would love to see it happen because yes, they're frustrated by Ghost despair. They don't, you know, they don't like the on that again, con- off again thing. They don't that like contract the has flipped. We all thought it was gonna be the best value contract yeah, ever. Yeah, sure. And now it looks like such an albatross around the team's neck. Right. It's so but, funny. Well, and here's the thing that I, again, what I want to, like what I talk about or what I feel like I keep coming back to when it comes to the construction of this roster right now is you've got to stop putting it on Chuck Fletcher for trying to do stuff with other people's signings. Shane yep. Gosses Bear was I not agree. his signing. He didn't give him six years at 4.5 mil per because of one way, good 50 point season or 60 point season. Right. In, in the same way that we want to talk about Ron Hextall and how he deserves a lot of the credit for this team. He also deserves in this example, blame for the Shane Gosses pair contract. Well, to, like I said, to me, the two contracts everybody wants to move are both Ron Hextall yeah. contracts. They're not Paul Holmgren contracts. Right. They're and, Ron and, Hextall in the contracts. Same They're way, Shane Gosses pair and, and, um, and James Van Reems. Like I know that I've been, talk about I know that lot. I've been a little bit of a cheerleader for Ron Hextall and, and I stand by all of that for sure. But yes, you also have to acknowledge that he signed a couple of, a couple of poor contracts in his day. There's no GM out there is perfect. Okay. Absolutely. So, if, so here's the thing. If Ron Hextall's miss defensively was bought into Shane Goss's bears hype for a couple good years and signed him to a big deal, but not you, even a huge so, deal, but, just kind but of a, also, a big deal, but also drafted Provorov and Sanheim and my, and signed Myers as an undrafted free agent. Well, I, I'm sticking just to the position. If you oh, had okay. one, if you had one miss on uh, uh, with a defenseman for signing him to a big contract because he had a big year, Right. And drafted a bunch of others that proved to be better. You know, yeah, it's not, it's you not hit on more. Problem. It's yeah. the same thing to me with okay, James Van Reems like was his bad signing at forward, but you drafted other guys. You drafted Morgan Frost and you drafted like you did draft Nolan Patrick, and that's a bit of a question mark but too. But, obviously, Travis but who was but you drafted Travis Konechny and you gave and you started to give people the idea like you you gotta give him credit for the preaching of patience when it came to Sean Couturier is still only 24, 25. Give it time. He'll get there. He'll get there. 27. He's a Selkie winner. I'm you know sure I mean? there was pressure, on, was, Hex- I'm time, sure there was pressure on Ron Hextall to move Sean Couturier. Scott Lawton's another example too. And that's not a draft pick of Hextall's. I'm sorry. Did it, Hextall sign the Couturier contract? Probably. Cause if Hextall signed the Couturier contract in my mind, he gets a pass for ghost. Probably. Because because let's let's look at it like that. They both make about four and a half. Realistically, Sean Couturier should probably make about seven. Go should make about two and a half. They they roughly cancel each other out in terms of value in my book. Right. I mean, Ghost, Ghost is a little overpaid at this point. Sean Couturier is a little underpaid at this point. I'm willing to give Ron Hextall a pass on that. Well, here's the other thing I want to talk about when it comes to Gustafson too, because. For sure. The thing that I, and I, I said this to you guys in the chat because I knew it was one of the topics I wanted to bring up. The thing that I hate the most about the off season, especially when it's as long as this one's been and going to be. And I say, it's funny. I say how long it's been because it's been what? Three weeks. I mean, literally the off season so far well, has been about a month. The long. Flyers off season has been a little longer. No, I, well, true. But I'm saying like, you knew that there was nothing that really could be done. I mean, what, what happens in the three weeks when you're not in the playoffs anymore and you're waiting for the Stanley cup to be awarded, you, you can basically resign your own guys. Right. And, and realistically they've done just about all of that. I mean, he's going out and taking care of, he's taking care of every restricted free agent contract, except for Phil Myers, it's which literally is literally just Phil Myers at this point. Right. It's right? Phil Myers and that's it. And you've, Obviously, there's nothing that's threatening that he's not going anywhere. He'll be back. And I think what they're trying to do is negotiate for term and cap hit for him specifically that fits the flat cap. 
so he doesn't feel like they're in trouble. Okay. It's not he, because I, I don't think you're sitting there looking at Phil Myers and going, whatever you want, you're not worth, you know, I think right. you're, I think what you're trying to do is sit there and say, if you can bear with us, kind of like Lindblom, if you can bear with us for a couple of years, because we're, we know finances are not going to look good. I hope it's the smallest contract you ever sign because you're going to be worth more than this. Right. And as we're sitting here, the Flyers have, uh, according to Cap Friendly, the Flyers are sitting on approximately $4.8 million in cap space. Which is interesting because to me, I wonder if you couldn't even go long term with Myers and say for five years, here's three and a half mil. Man, I, the it only feels too reason early to go there. The only reason I'm concerned about that is because we know the cap is staying flat. Next year, you have Scott Lawton, who's going to need a raise. Travis Sanheim's up with arbitration rights. Carter Hart has to get signed. Nolan Patrick is up again. I, I, I don't know if I can go long term at four and a half on Phil Myers at this point. And the only contract you're losing is Raffle. Is Raffle and Brian Elliott. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, and Eric Gustafson now. Right. So that's another one of them. Well, OK, there's a couple other things that kind of come into play, too, because I do it think it's hairy there. there well, there is buyout money that doesn't get allocated next year, which is a huge thing, because right now they're they're their hands oh, are tied. Right, with right, buy, right. Their hands are tied with buyout money this year that could yeah, have helped them. Yeah, they're still the sitting Andrew on one point nine from Andrew McDonald and five and six hundred thousand from David Schlemko. So they're sitting on about two and a half million of dead cap. Just just bear in mind that the Andrew McDonald buyout contract is worth more than Justin Braun this year. Yep. Like, and th- that could have been Justin Braun's contract. To be fair, I'd rather have Justin Braun on the team than Andrew McDonald. So I'm fine well, with that. The, well, I know, but I'm saying that, that <laughs> one point, that 1.9 goes a long way in a free agency discussions and B keeping your own players, maybe longer term and knowing you're okay in the flat cap. Yeah. So, you know what? It's, it's not quite as hairy as maybe I thought it was. Um, I think but nonetheless, okay, so let me go back to where I was trying to For get sure. with that point. Yeah, yeah. So the offseason, the thing I hate about the offseason, especially when it's as long as this one's going to feel, is I really hate speculation about what a player is going to look like before we actually see it. Right. Okay. I think people I know forget we're going the off- players work out in the offseason. No, players get better. Players. <laughs> and, here's, no, here, and here's why I hate it. I know we can sit there and look at what a player's done in the past and have a track record of things and all that. And I understand that there's weight to that. I'm not saying there's not weight to Eric Gustafson's a good offensive defenseman. He can put up 40 points a year. No problem. It seems like, and he can give you some significant minutes, but he's not going to light it up. There's not a huge pressure on him to be the guy. He can blend in pretty well with the core, I think. Right. But so what I'm saying about this is this, why are we so worried about this right now? when we haven't even been able to see a practice, not see it physically, but to see, okay, what line combinations come out of the first practice of the year and how much I was about to ask you that like, and what weight comes out of it. Like, how do we know that on day one, that the instant top pairing for the flyers, isn't Ivan Provorov, Phil Myers. And that's the guy who who jumps up and replaces. Yeah. The top pairing on opening night, you think there's potential that it's Provorov Myers. I think there's potential for it. I think okay. that, and I think you could get creative. I, I wouldn't, obviously there's one thing I would not do with this signing. And that would be, don't put ghost and Gus together. You know, you can't put two offensive line guys just because one plays left and one is able to play right. Though he's a left-handed shot. I right. think, that, I, but, I would, but I think I would I think much rather I, have Gustafson next to a guy like Sanheim who well, can and I was play about offensively. Say, yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say, much more too. reliable think, defensively. And I think that could work. I honestly think that, you know, what else could even work? Gustafson could possibly work with a with a Hager Braun. Oh, that would be fun. I wouldn't mind Gustafson Robert Hag. Like it could work. And then that and leaves you and with Braun Sandheim go- Gostaspear, which or we've Sanheim, seen or, work. Or Sandheim in the past. Braun. Or Sandheim Braun. Well, we've seen Sandheim Gostaspear work in the past. And, and Sandheim, Sandheim Braun. Braun is, well, Sandheim Braun fine. has worked better than other combinations. It's worked better sure. than Hag Braun. It's worked better than Gostaspear Braun. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm concerned that AV has it locked in that it's got to be Sandheim Myers because of how good they were together. It's and it, and I understand that. I wonder. I don't know how you're supposed to try to play. I mean, let's just say they could go out there and give Gustafson a shot on the top pair if they really wanted to. He does qualify as a top four for his role, for his minutes yeah. and his role. I don't know it's going to work. Right. And yeah. that's, I think that's the concern, but, I, but here's the thing. We don't, that that's the point. We don't know the answer to that question. And until we do, 
let's stop reading too much into stuff like this. Let's stop reading into too much about because let's this way. All it takes is one weekend of camp and Phil Myers comes back looking better than ever. And they go, there's no holding him back anymore. He's got to go up, man. How now good is that top no, pair? Now man. he's, now he's the top guy. And if, and to me, if Eric Gustafson is going to play the right side as your fourth defenseman alongside Sanheim, I can live with that. Yeah. Now I don't feel like he's as much. Now I feel like he's more of a Niskin in replacement than before because he's not playing the second. He's not the top line, right. top pair, right D he's the second pair, right D with the offensive ability to make up for what Niskin and gave you with the ability to play the minutes. And I don't care that he doesn't have the best defensive ability because I'd like to see it at that point because it's the middle of the pack. It's not the number one guy. People are afraid of him being the number one guy because of his defensive liability. Right. You know, but he is. And then in the meantime, you get, you get a very, very, very talented top pair. And right. Phil Myers has potential to surpass what Matt Niskanen was giving you last season. And instead of being a Niskanen replacement, I even go beyond that. Right. So and I'm not necessarily saying he will, but I think he's got the potential. But those are if the he, things that's that's where you're at with a, a very young team. Right. But those are the things that frustrate me the most about the offseason is that for the better part of a week, it was watching to see if there was anything else out there because you felt like you still needed a pure right handed shot defenseman. You needed somebody who was better defensively. And I'm not trying to sit there and say that they don't they're not going to like there's no way that Eric Gustafson makes them a better team defensively among at the defensive position than they were with Matt Niskanen. There's no way, but let's no, just, certainly not, but let's put it this way. If the method that comes out of it, when, when Chuck Fletcher gets asked about Gustafson being signed and the idea of Gustafson and uh, Gustafson and Gustafson being on the same team together, not the same pairing, obviously, but the same team, the, same the idea is, yeah. but that the idea is that, if we're playing offense more often than we're defending less. So maybe that'll be a way to go. I'm not saying that that's a strategy to live by, but let's see if it works that way before you go crazy with it. And, right. you know, and not only that, but let's see if anybody else comes in and develops better. Like I said, Mark Friedman's a guy who's been waiting in the wings for a long time, has gotten a taste of the NHL, has looked good with me. He's gotten a taste of the NHL and he's not going to be a lighted up offensively guy. No, he's there to play the back end more. He can move the puck. He's not like, it's not like he's immobile. But let's see where he goes with this. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. let's just kind of see where the whole thing goes. Because collectively, I think with Gustafson, they've got eight really good defensemen who can all play in an, in, in an NHL lineup somewhere. Yeah, and, and I wonder if we've talked about what next season is going to look like and if the AHL is going to run and potential expanded rosters. I wonder if the Flyers just carry eight or nine defensemen next season and just the, that third pair kind of just rotates in and out or there's you know mixing and matching and you know we've talked about the fact that the the, the schedule next year might be a little condensed to try to uh, mm -hmm. bring things back towards uh october to may uh, i'm curious if teams are going to carry extra defensemen and we're going to see a little more rotation in the lineup and a little more platooning than we generally see and if that's the case you carry all these guys, right? When, when Gustafson's not in ghost is in that role, you know, you kind of see this rotation in the, the bottom four. Right. And I, I don't, look, I, th I definitely think they haven't had the ability to trade ghost if they wanted to, because they're not getting an offer that they think he, they deserve for him. Yeah. It's, it's tough. It's hard and to it's get going positive to be value for ghost at this point. And it's not as simple as saying trade Gustafson bear for Patrick line. You know what yeah, I mean? Certainly, like, certainly not. This is not, again, this is not forced trades in NHL. You know, no, in, uh, in honestly, EA at this Sports point, NHL. and by the way, I, I do just want to shout out EA Sports for an awful rating on Shane Gosp Beer. How is he an 85 in franchise mode? <laughs> you, I didn't even you, notice you make that, your, to be honest. You make your best lines and they put them like on your top pair. He's like an 85 with medium elite potential. Listen, Ghost, I love you, buddy. You played like an 80 last year, Max. <laughs> 80 might, be, 80 might be generous. 80 might be generous. Played. 80s don't get healthy scratched for half the season. Correct. Uh, um, sorry. Either way, I didn't mean to take that sideways shot at Ghost. That was really a shot at EA Studios. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but, but nonetheless, like I do think that what they're coming to terms with is that they're going to have him for another year. You know, I, I'm not saying they, that that's the way they wanted it to be. It's just that that's like, I think they're stuck with him for right now because, because flat cap you know, not, it, not it, the best year. You're going to be selling low anyway. Retain. Well, and you're going to be selling low anyway. 
Yep. Like you got to know that it's not going to be Goss is bare for a big name. It's going to be re- Goss is bare for like rehab a Rehab is the way to go. Well, and he has. That's the thing. Like he is going to come back healthy. And to me, this is it. You got. You got. Oh, one I meant more rehabbing shot. his career. Oh uh, well, yeah. But this is. But that's what I'm saying. This <laughs> rehabbing is rehabbing his value. You got one more. You got one more shot. Right. You know, here at least you got one more shot and that's it. Then yeah, after that, it's over. If not, in Philly, I, I, I think, think I think the Philadelphia Flyers trade a second pick and chain Gosta Spear to the Seattle Kraken. It would be interesting. I I mean, at this point. But that was the other thing with Gustafson, too. At this point, by giving by yeah. giving Gustafson a one year deal, you avoid the expansion thing yep, because now, if you, you know, re- like we know who the three defensemen are going to who are going to be protected are going to be. We've known it for a while. And they're sure. not, not going to be able to change it. And by the way, that's another reason why you might see a little less of Zamula. I know it doesn't really affect him, but just, keep just to his, not start keep his, his profile clock. low. Yeah, exactly. Just so. there's no reason to there's no reason to shine a big old bright light on him. 